gonna do it again. He's gonna do it again. Yes, he is. Revival is coming. Well, can't you hear the rain? Well, it's about coming down. This is Brother John. Welcome to Revival Hour. Wow. Things are getting excited. We're almost there. There. Where is there? Well, we're going to the Citadel Hill, September 21st, Friday night, 6 p.m. Lord willing, we'll open up the doors at 5.30 so people can come in and don't miss out and get your tickets. Google um, Citadel Hill citywide pray meeting and the event right whatever that website is will come up and you can get your free tickets right there free tickets and uh, we want you to be there um, early because you know the committee feels that we're going to have an overflow that means that we're going to have more than 3,000 people uh, comfortably we can put 2,500 people there and we're encouraging people to bring law the your chairs you know those folding chairs to sit down because the uh, Citadel only have a couple hundred chairs there that we are going to use a few of them, about a dozen of them for the guests um, uh, that will be speaking there. I mean, not speaking, greeting and um, and uh, praying. Everybody is going to have a little prayer thing. Then we're going to go up on the up the stairs and we're going to walk around where all the cannons are and we're going to pray for uh, the HRM, for Halifax, for... Uh, Nova Scotia, for Canada, for the Maritimes. So uh, we're going to do that. What an exciting time. But let me read a little uh, portion of a scripture here. And uh, this is the red, le red letters in most of the Bibles, Jesus speaking. And he says, uh, you know, Jesus said, he says, you know, Father, that they may be one as we are one. You know, and I'm going to talk about unity a little bit like that. And because somebody asked me that uh, the other day. And, uh, you know, God is all for unity. And we have to understand that in the time that the Bible was written, there were not denominations. There was not Catholic and Baptist and Lutheran and Presbyterian and Pentecostal and uh, Assemblies of God and... Uh, uh, anyway, all of these denominations, you know, man-made denomination, unfortunately, and, and uh, we all went in uh, different ways, and uh, we have different ways of worship. Uh, we have differences of uh, sometimes interpretations of the Bible, but we all believe in the same God, you know, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So um, in the Trinity, Right? So uh, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, three in one. And, uh, and, and you know, through the Bible, the Lord always promoted unity. And, um, and let me read this in uh, chapter um, 14 of uh, John. And, um, and he says this. He says, if you had really known me, Jesus said, you also have known my Father. For now on you know him and have seen him. Believe. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and then we will be satisfied. And Jesus said to him, Have I been with you for such a long time and you do not know me yet? So what was he saying? He says, you're looking for the Father. You're looking at the Father. If you see me, you see the Father. You know, that's what he was saying. And he says, now recognize clearly who I am. Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father? Listen, unity. That I'm in the Father and the Father is in me. The words I say to you do not say on my own initiative or authority, but the Father abiding continually in me, thus his work He's attesting miracles and acts of power. Verse 11, it says, Believe me that I, I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. Otherwise, believe me because of the very works themselves which you have witnessed, meaning the healings, the miracles, and all of that. It says, And I assure you and most solemnly say to you, anyone who believes in me, 
our Savior will also do the things that I do, and he will do even greater things than this in extend and outreach because I'm going to the Father. And I will do whatever you ask in my name as my representatives. This, is, this I will do so that the Father may be glorified and celebrated in the Son. If you ask me anything in my name as my representative, I will do it. If you really love me, you will keep and obey my commandments. So right there, we see that we see that they came unto him and said, show us the Father. And here it is. I'm the Father. But what I want to talk about, the oneness of Jesus and the Father. And, you know, in the prayer as he continues, you know, in, 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 um, in the next chapter and that, he says, Father, he's praying. And uh, this is before he's he's going to go to the cross right so so this could be the last words you know when the last words are given i mean if you if you know that you had 10 more minutes to be alive what are you going to say are you going to talk about the weather are you going to talk oh it's raining it's cold it's hot no you're going to talk about what the most important thing that you want to deposit in your family you want to deposit in somebody's life so jesus said lord that they may be one as we are one so he was given his last prayer the last request and what was that request that they may be one as we are one that's why the bible says one race one lord one church one body so there is no many bodies and one and there is a heaven there is one heaven you know many, many weeks ago i posted on facebook uh, we don't have two heavens or three or 20 heavens you know one for the baptist one for the pentecostals one for the lutheran we don't have different heavens hello come on really it's reality we don't have different heavens we don't have a Baptist heaven. We don't have a Lutheran heaven. We don't have, we have one heaven where all of us that believe in him, that are born again believers, that accepted, that have repented of our ways and turned to God and, uh, and, and live for him and receive all that heaven has. I mean, we're going to go to heaven, to one heaven where the Father is, where Jesus is. Amen. So we, that's, that's where we're going. So we have to understand unity. So in order, you know, I mean, at the Citadel Hill, we're going to be talking, we're going to be singing. Uh, I'm asking somebody to sing this, this old song that we used to sing many years ago. It says, we are one in the body. We are one in the Lord. And they will know us by our love. Remember that song? We are one in the body. We are one in the Lord. So, and they'll know that we are Christians by our love. So that means that uh, we got to get back to that. We got to get back to the place of unity. We got to get back. That doesn't mean that we're going to infiltrate, that I'm going to infiltrate your church and make you worship God the way I am. No. We got to show the world that we're one. So that way they will know that we are Christians by our love. You know, not by divisions, but by unity. And, you know, and I'm bringing this up because somebody asked me, a pastor asked me, I was talk, we were talking about the Citadel Hill, and he asked me, and he says, what is the vision that you see for this whole thing? <laughs> and it was funny. It was a good question, and uh, nobody asked me that before. And I said to him, I said, you know what? I don't know. You know, it started as having a prayer meeting at the Citadel Hill. It started at, hey, it will be nice if churches come together. And, and I, and, and when I announced that, I really believed that that God was in that. And uh, you know, I was saying that I says, hey, it will be nice to come together at the Citadel. But I didn't know to what extent that will happen. And look at what it is now. All these churches coming together, mayors, uh, Christian mayor, 
all of that. I mean, uh, Mayor Mills from Truro, he's the MC. Mayor Savage, uh, he will be representing Halifax. Lyndall Smith and all of these other people that are Christians that will that will uh, that will uh, pastors uh, that will be praying as well. You know, and and you know, and they and he said to me, he says, "What do you see? What what is your vision?" I says, "I don't know because the Holy Spirit." has taken over and I said brother I says the only thing that I see here is unity and he says wow that excites me unity you see and I said to him I says you know we live in a time that we got to stop preaching unity in our within our four walls of a church but not showing it you know, I'm going to do a program uh, soon on um, uh, what racism. And I'm the right guy because I'm Spanish. So I can talk about racism. Because, I mean, you go to New York, New York City, I tell you, there's a lot of racism there, a lot of Spanish there, and uh, good ones, bad ones. You know, so I want to talk about that. But, but he says, you know, unity, that excites me. And I said, yes, but, you know, we got to stop preaching unity if we got to stop preaching unity if we're not going to be united. Because then, you see, the people of God, the sheep in our churches, they want to see us preach what we believe and what we put to practice. So I said, you know, wouldn't it be nice if uh, uh, September 21st, we all come together praying, declaring that we are Christians declaring that Jesus Christ is the same God yesterday today and forever declaring that Jesus Christ is still the answer to the world today declaring that Jesus is the only one that made the statement that said I am the way the truth and the life no man cometh unto me unto the Father unless they come through me so that means that that's a big statement. He's the only one that made that statement. No other person have ever made that statement here in this world. But Jesus. And uh, if you're a Christian and you know that that has become truth and that word has been true. So what happens here now, now we're going to the Citadel Hill. This is a great opportunity. So I'm encouraging pastors, if you believe in unity, the sheep at your church, they need to see you standing up and to say, let's support this. This is not the work of man. No, because men never, never created unity. God wanted to have that for his people. And we have to understand that we're not longer our own. We belong to him. So it's not my will, but thy will be done. That's the Lord's prayer, right? hallowed be thy name thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven thy kingdom come so that means that we gotta we gotta flow with the word of god that means that lord the god father that we as we are one let them be one so that that that's the message so what i'm saying is this is that we need to show people here in the city in our churches that we're standing for unity that we're standing to make a voice, one voice to HRM and to the Maritimes and to Canada. The media will be there. Newspaper will be there. Television will be there. Imagine doing all of this and what a shame if people don't show up. What a shame if pastors don't back this up. Even if you're away, pastor, that Friday, you got to promote it before with everything that you have. If you believe in, in unity, if you don't believe in unity, then don't preach it. Don't talk about it. But if you as a Christian, you believe in unity, you got to shout it and say, this is an opportunity that God has given us once again. You see, people came together before and they have done things before. And we believe that God is picking it up again. And the Lord has put in our hearts that this will be a yearly thing. Twice a year, we're going to come together in unity. Pastors coming together. 
churches coming together twice a year. That's not much to ask. So we're going to do once at the Citadel Hill in, when the weather is good, let's say September every year. And then in January, the Lord has put in my heart. So January the 5th, we're going to be coming together from 6 o'clock in the morning until 6 o'clock p.m., 12 hours together. Every hour there will be a different pastor, different denomination that will speak for 15 minutes and we're going to pray for 40, 45 minutes and we're going to dedicate 2019 to God. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Then you can go back to your own churches and you can do your own thing there. You can do your evangelism. You can do the discipleship. You can do whatever. But it will be such an encouragement to your people, to God's people, to the sheep in your churches. To show them the magnitude to for two, three, four thousand people coming together and praying. Do you think that if we all came together with the right heart, not because somebody else is coming, but wouldn't it be, wouldn't it be marvelous that if we all come with the right heart, the right attitude? That means that we believe in this event, that we believe in, in prayer, that we believe in unity, that we believe that as the Father and Jesus is one, we ought to be one. So if we believe all that, we come the right heart, I tell you, God will command his blessing upon this region. And what will happen? This region will be blessed by the Lord. We will have better marriages. We will have better youth. We will have less crime. We will have better resources. We will have better laws. We will have more righteousness. We will have more light than darkness. We will have more God than evil. That's the, that's the fruit. That's the outcome when God's people come together in unity. You see, I have a saying, none of us have it all together and that's the whole truth none of us have it all together but together we have it all you know look what happened in the old testament the tower of babel what happened there they came in unity they were one voice one mind and what did god say i mean they wanted to build a tower to reach heaven imagine and then they say hey we better come down and confuse them a little bit because when they come together in unity, in the right mind, they can do anything and nothing will stop them. My God, imagine if we came in the right mind, in the right spirit, together, to reach this nation for God. It took 11 fellows, 11 disciples, to turn the whole world right side up. Imagine what 3,000 coming together in this region can do to Nova Scotia, to the Maritimes. We can turn the whole four provinces here in the Atlantic Canada to God if we really believe in unity. Because there is nothing that can stop us. We don't have to change the nomination. We don't have to, we don't have to change our label on our, on our churches. No, we don't have to do that. You can have your, your names. You can have whatever as long as we follow. Listen, as long as we follow the word of God. Jesus said, if you love me, listen to what Jesus said. If you love me, you obey what? You obey my commandments. You obey my word. If you love me, you obey. That's all. So God is not asking you Baptists or Lutheran or Pentecostals or whatever, evangelical, whatever you call yourself, you know, he's not asking you to come because of your denomination. He's asking about unity because that's the word of God. So he says, if you love me, you obey my commandment. So why? Because he is the word of God. The Bible says in John chapter 1, verse 1, it starts there. It says, in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld His glory 
as the only begotten of the Father. So that means that the Word of God is Christ, is Jesus. And Jesus, when he walked on this earth, he said these powerful words, if you love me, obey my commandments. That's the bottom line of Christianity. You know, it's not that, uh, again, uh, there is not one heaven for the Baptists, one heaven for the Pentecostals, one heaven for the Lutheran, one heaven for the Anglicans. One he there is not many heavens. There is one heaven. And if you want to go to heaven, we're going to have to learn how to live together here first, how to reach the world together for Christ. Because the Bible says that when you turn your life, listen to this, when you turn your life to God, then you are not longer your own. The Bible says that if you want salvation, then he purchases you. He paid a price. He purchased. So he says, you are not longer your own, the Word of God says. He says, now you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. So how can you claim to be a Christian and say that the Holy Spirit lives in you, but you don't follow the Word of God when it comes to unity? How can you do that? So you're going against, and that's the reason that that's the reason the Word of God also says it says many we say, Lord, 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 you know, and he says, I never knew you. So that means that many will will be rejected at the gates of heaven and sent back, sent to the other side, because the God will say, I never knew you, depart from me. He says, not everybody that says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Right? So that means that a lot of us here on earth, we believe that we're Christians. And we, and we claim to be Christians because of our, our, our denomination or because of, uh, of uh, oh, we read the Bible or whatever. No, uh, it's by our life. They will know us by our life. We are the living epistles, the Bible says. We are the Bible to this world. We are the word of God to this world. I tell you, this is good teaching. This is good preaching for us Christians. This is good preaching. So how can we say that we're Christians and yet we're divided? How can we say that we're Christians and be racist? against another color, another, another, uh, another uh, group. How can, you, how can you say you're Christians and you say, I don't like Chinese, I don't like whites, I don't like blacks, I don't like yellows, I don't like this and that. How can you be a Christian and, and, be, and be prejudiced? Come on, this is the truth. So Jesus, I go back to what he said. He says, if you love me, obey my commandments. Obey my commandments. See, all is about love. People that will go to heaven is people that love God and love him enough to obey his commandments. To obey his commandments. I have no choice. I can't, I can't choose who I love and who I don't love. I can't do that. And if somebody hurt me, let's say I, I'm Spanish. If a, if, a, if a yellow person hurts me i can't just judge the whole yellow race and say i don't like all the yellow ones i don't like the right ones i don't like the white ones i don't like them i can't say that i'm a christian what did jesus said when somebody somebody hurts you turn the other cheek right how many times we forgive them 70 times seven wow that's the word <laughs> that's the commands of God so he says Jesus says if you love me you got to follow that why oh here's the answer are you ready the reason that he gave us the word of God listen the reason that he gave us the word of God to obey it he knew that it will go contrary to our carnal mind he it will be cont contrary to the works of the flesh why Steve He's preparing us for heaven. He's preparing you and me to be with them for eternity. How can you be in this world with hate in your heart, with division in your heart, 
and think that you're going to spend eternity with a holy God, uh, a God that is against division, a God that is against uh, racism, a God that is against disunity and divisions and all of that. How can you, how can you believe that? So the reason that the Word of God is there as a mirror for us to change is because God Almighty is preparing us to spend eternity with Him. Yes, you know, look at the people. They, they, they suffered there in the wilderness for 40 years when it was only going to take, what, 11 days or something like that? So 40 years. Why? Because they had to learn to live together. To put up, to, <laughs> because we're different. I mean, you know, put 10, 10 Christians in one place. I tell you, they might get along, they might not know. But if we love God, we better get along. So that means that we better die to self. That's what the Bible says. It says, pick up the cross once a month and follow me. Is that what the Word of God says? No, it says, pick up the cross daily. What else does it say? Deny yourself once a year in Yom Kippur. Is that what he says? No. He says, pick up the cross daily. Deny yourself daily and follow me. Why? Because he's preparing us to be with him forever. And we're going to reign with him for a thousand years. He's preparing a mansion for all of us there. So why give up? Listen to this. Why give up heaven and choose hell? Because there is, there is no purgatory. There is not in between. Why reject heaven just because we want our own way? Remember, Adam and Eve sin. And because they sin, because they disobey sin into the world, sin enter into the world, sickness enter into this world, evil enter into this world, And what happened, and he made us selfish. That's why the Bible says that the carnal mind doesn't understand the spiritual things. So there is two worlds. There is the carnal mind. There's a spiritual mind. There is the flesh and there is a spirit. And I tell everybody, you want to be a good Christian? Starve the flesh, feed the spirit. So that means kill, destroy the works of the flesh, the desires of this world. And choose righteousness, choose holiness, because without holiness, nobody will see the Lord. So that means that's a good revelation. And I tell you, this is good down to earth teaching. Why? Because God is preparing us to be with Him for eternity. So that means that we have to die to the flesh, we have to die to self. We have to die to our own ambitions. We have to die of our pride, of our arrogance, of our apathy, our complacency. We have to die of our sin. Jesus came to save the world from our sin. So he wants us to die from these things that will keep us from heaven. So, sit at the hill. We're going there on September 21st at 6 p.m. to proclaim that we choose to obey the word of God. To proclaim, we love God. We love Jesus. And we choose to obey Him. I think that a lot has been said today. And I thank God that I was able to explain it well. Well enough to understand that we must die for Him to live. Just like they said in the Bible. It is no longer I that lives but Christ that lives in me. It's not, it's not I that live, but the Baptists live in me. Or the Pentecostal. No, 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 no. There is nothing like that. God will, never, God will never care about what denomination you are. Because we're not a proof unto man. We're a proof unto God. It's not what man sees. It's what God sees. He couldn't care less about our denominations. He doesn't. Where in the Word of God says that he cares about denominations. He cares about you and me. So in order, because he cares about you and me, he cares enough to say, unite yourselves. You can have your own buildings, your own things, your own churches, but be together. Love one another. For this is my commandment, that you love one another. And he says, you know what? Forget about the, uh, the, the, the uh, Ten Commandments. I say, I'm going to give you two. 
What were the two? He says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with everything that's in you. And what else did he say? And love your neighbor as yourself. There, if you do those two, you have completed all. That's the message. You cannot love your neighbor unless you love him first. God bless you. I love you. See the Del Hill, September 21st. Be there. And I hope you're enjoying all the announcements every day. God bless you. Love you. This is Brother John. Till next time. Bye for now.